Ah, oh, hoy hoy, just starting with a new catchphrase idea there. Um, <laughs> welcome to FFS Livestream. Uh, we're back in the magnificent Pleasant Stone, which is looking a little peaky today because the weather ain't good. It's pretty bad. I think the heat wave's gone now. We're finished, we're done. Now it's the rain. FFS Livestream is a community project to try and bring people working at the festival together uh, to create a, a community spirit and just have a bit of fun outside the normal PR slog of the month of Edinburgh. Um, you can like and subscribe, that would be lovely. Uh, you can email us, you can tweet at us and ask us questions to ask our guests. We've got guests. Uh, and you can also donate, donate to our GoFundMe page. That would be lovely because we haven't had a single sausage yet and I'm going to be very poor in September, right? Right then, here we are with three lovely guests. We have, from left to right, we have Eddie Elks. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. Absolutely most welcome. Uh, your show is Drenched? That's right, yeah, Drenched. We're on at the Bunker 2 at 3pm uh, at the Pleasance Courtyard every day. Uh, I haven't even got a day off, um, which is, yeah. There's a few people doing that uh, this year. I'm not acting in it, which is probably why we haven't got a day off. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're doing it every day. So yeah, even tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that's going really well. We've got, um, it's, a, it's kind of a, a character comedy, one-man storyteller piece about uh, a character called Daniel Drench who's Cornwall's most prolific but unstable storyteller <laughs> and he's, he's come up from, from Penzance to share his unique version of the Mermaid of Xena. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a fun piece, it's kind of as much about him and his issues as the story which uh, he's telling. And you've written uh, this and directed it? Co-written yeah, and directed with, uh, with Dan Frost who plays Daniel Drench. Um, so yeah, it's going really well, yeah, we've been selling out quite a lot. Um, yeah, great, yeah, really good response. So, yeah, it's, it's good, it's Excellent good stuff. And I'm going to leap across and she's Holly Hello. Morgan. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> All right, thank you. You, you have a show here too. I do. It's a returning show. Uh, no, no, it's a, it's a slightly different one. It's a different uh, one? It's a different one. Oh. It's called uh, Holly Morgan Madonna or Hall. And it's... Uh, no it, spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a musical comedy about misogyny. Uh, so it's uh, Freud's Madonna Hall complex with songs of Madonna. Uh, just chatting about what a... What a year we've had, us women. You didn't uh, want to do one about Madonna with the songs of Freud? <laughs> we thought it would be shorter uh, and much more about penis envy, um, which is rarely mentioned, actually, in the show. Uh, yeah. We mention it literally every day on do this you? show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we also have William Donaldson. Hello. From the cast of Prom Queen. Yeah, we're having an amazing time up here. And you're playing? I'm playing RuPaul. Why not? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic, yeah. So you dressed down this morning for yeah, us? Yeah, I decided that I wasn't going to wear all of the sequins for you, for all the sparkle on the camera. Presumably once it's on, it's, it's on for the day. The, the dress? Yeah. And the makeup. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's, it takes about an hour to get that makeup on. So once it's on, it's staying on <laughs> all night long as well. I keep it on, I figure I've got to get the, my money's worth out of it. Well, you're looking very well on it. You're looking mm. very fresh. Thank you very much. And you're Thank looking you. very young. Uh, just a, a point of interest, uh, I know William from 20 years ago? Yeah, from university. From university together, and that was 20 years ago. And then, we, although we've been Facebook friends, I think, for a while, the first time I saw you since then was last year when yeah. you were beetling around also in Doing Prom Queen. Queen, yeah, yeah, yeah. This year we've kind of got a bit more of a, a bigger, um, stronger show. There's more dance routines, there's an extra song in it and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's Well, normally we don't do plugs for shows uh, on the show, oh. But we've done them now. <laughs> uh, all of the all of the details for the shows will be in the description uh, at the bottom of the screen. In the description of the YouTube video, you'll find links to all of the tickets for those. So now, no more PRing. Let's talk about Edinburgh. So, Eddie, how, how many how many fringes have you been up for? Uh, I think this is my sixth or seventh. Yeah, as an actor. Also, as, yeah, writer, director. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, 2003, 07. Nine, I think twelve. Yes, I don't know. How many is that? Five, so six, that's nice. Yeah. Nice spread out. So you. You've yeah, it's recovery time in between <laughs> each one. Um, two, three years follow in the middle. Yeah, well, so it's been six since we last brought one of our shows. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, really nice to be back though. And um, yeah, we've been around a bit as well. We've been in the Underbelly before, Gilded Balloon before. Now it's our first time in the Pleasant, so it's nice to yeah get a taste of different venues. And, yeah, different spots. Lovely stuff. Have you yeah. seen much stuff while you've been here? Uh, I've started to watch a bit more now. Yeah, well, I've seen um, 
It's that middle period, isn't it? You don't really want to see stuff like early on. Early on. You're kind of concentrating on your own exactly, thing. Exactly, yeah, in the thick of it. You try and, try and see a bit more later on. And also, from my point of view as a director, stop watching your own show as well. I guess to the point where you start getting yeah, a bit bored of it. And yeah, it's rubbish. Isn't it? it's just, God, you lose total perspective. Um, so yeah, and that's a good excuse to go start watching other people's shows. So yeah, I was in Electrolyte behind us the other day. That was good fun. Um, also, yeah, I showed, I think that was done at Assembly. Um, it's a cabaret show hosted by the establishment. I don't know if you know those um, guys. Yes. Uh, Nina Conti was on there as, as the monkey. She is the monkey now, isn't she? Yeah. Which is great. Um, another act, yeah, who's uh, she's playing Theresa May. A cabaret burlesque Theresa yes. May. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty Shades of May. Yeah, she's been pulling <laughs> EU flagged uh, bunting out of her knickers. Right. Um, which is beautifully surreal. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, those are the yeah, highlights. It's good we can laugh about it. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Oh shit, I brought up. Brexit, yeah. No, that's okay. We, we we don't have a ban on the B word, but we we generally we generally skirt around it as soon as possible because yeah. very rarely does it make people smile. Uh, Holly, you've been here many uh, years before. Yeah, this is my second with my own stuff, and then I, I did it as a student. You know, lying on the roll mile with a fire in your hand, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, when I was a student a long time ago. Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, it's lovely to be back. It's hard though, isn't it? You know, it's not an easy month, but um, you support each other and have fun and see incredible work. Um, I haven't got a chance to see Plum Queen yet, which I'm desperate to do, or Drenched, either, which both sound fantastic. You don't need to say that. You don't need to say that. Just <laughs> no, I really want to see it. Genuinely. It's not really genuine. Yeah, yeah. I genuinely do. Um, I have seen some great stuff. James uh, Rowland's Revelations. Have you seen yeah, that? Some of them. Big fan of James Rowland. Yeah, yeah. He's actually. Um, I'm getting married in a month and he's going to be a celebrant at my wedding. Congratulations. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Have you been on the Royal Mile this year? Not yet, actually. Only, um, yeah, un very quickly, under duress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Running down it like that. I went the other day, I was talking about this the, uh, on a show the other day, that I actually, I went down there because I like to go down there because as much as I hate the bustle and I hate everybody on there yeah. selling their shows, it's just brilliant. It's, it yeah. makes you really excited about You'd have to be an incredible cynic to not walk down there and go, oh God, these people are all like really pumped up and enthusiastic about the festival. It's, it's really good to see. I will go down, I will. I feel awful now. <laughs> no, I will, I will go and have a, have a look. It's just, um, yeah, actually that's part of it, isn't it? Trying, trying to open your eyes to the festival rather than being blinkered about getting to where you need to be. And uh, yeah, enthusiasm. Yes, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. The good thing about the mile is it's not really sort of on the way to anywhere. Like yeah. you, can, you can easily go round it if you don't yes, want exactly, to. Yes, exactly. But exactly. if you go there, you've just got to go and get yeah. involved and do it. Don't fight it. Yeah. yeah. William, you've been coerced into doing any flyering? Yes, do some flyering a lot. Um, yesterday, I decided for the first time to go out in the makeup and the dress, and that got a lot of attention. <laughs> From lots of different crowds as well. Really? Absolutely, absolutely strange. Um, lots of older men asking for, <laughs> for selfies with me in the dress. And you can see lots of people with cameras just sort of hiding in the corner, wanting to take a picture. And I'm kind of encouraging them, like, feel free, take a picture, you know? <laughs> I didn't dress up like this to not get noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Edinburgh's not the most friendly city for, uh, for high heels. No, uh, there's a lot of cobbles. Yeah, cobbles and hills. Yeah. It's not ideal. It, and it can be cold. Uh, yesterday was kind of temperamental, sort of switching between that sunshine of Edinburgh that lures you out into something skimpy and then suddenly getting very cold. But thankfully there was a guy doing um, like a little routine, you know, a little street um, performer doing, playing lots of music. So I just sort of was dancing along with him, trying to keep myself warm and keep myself moving. I love the street performers. Yeah, I think, I think there's been some stuff in the papers this week about, I think David Mitchell did an article where he was saying he wasn't a big fan. Uh, in, in no uncertain terms, really. Oh. Um, I think it's really exciting. And, I love it. I was, huge amounts of colour. I was reading about one who's now got one of those sort of um, donate the, the, the tap cards. Yeah, yeah that's right. it. So you can take some no contactless payments for donations. <laughs> I think the Fringe have actually been pushing that this year. The, the Fringe Society have been have sort of. I think I don't know if they've actually officially teamed up with them, but certainly there are a lot of articles saying this is a very clever way of doing it because. Certainly over the last few years, as cash starts getting used less and less, mm. people doing free shows, like, it gives yeah. a very good excuse to the audience, like, oh, I didn't really cash with me, and now it's like, mm. da, da, yeah. Da. Yeah. I can set this up for a monthly donation if you like. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, the technology's now there to actually do that. Uh, 
What, what, what do you look forward to about Edinburgh? What do you? Uh, I think this year mainly being around, well, it's double edged, but being yeah around a lot of people actually. I'm at home, so I've got a little boy who's uh, eight months old. He's actually up at the moment. He's putting a bit of a different angle on my fringe experience as well. Um, early mornings, but um, but yeah, and at home, particularly if I'm writing or if I'm sort of auditioning or whatever, I just be yeah at home a lot. Or you know, and it's actually coming out for a month and being around you know, a shitload of other artists and creatives and people. And, you know, that's yeah. Even though you live in London, I think being up here feels like a lot busier life. You know, for just for this month. Um, so yeah, so I look forward to that, and obviously, yeah, sort of, yeah, testing the workout in a weird, I guess, sort of masochistic kind of way, putting your own stuff out there and seeing, you know, what comes back. Um, so I look forward to that, and yeah, and meeting people and yeah, rekindling old friendships. It, it is, it is a bit like a holiday camp, isn't it? Because I mean, a lot of mm. the performers like live in London, but. Often you see them here and you go, oh yeah, we'll catch up when we're back in London. And then like 11 yeah. months later, it's like, hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Holly I did see at the Volks Festival yeah. this year. Yeah. So, so we did sort of yeah, catch up like, in the middle of the year. Yeah, exactly. Do you, do you look forward to that as well? Is oh it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Volks, have you, have you guys done Volks Festival? Yeah. 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 No, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's just, you know, it is like a little mini Edinburgh reunion. It? it definitely felt like that this year. It's getting, yeah. it's getting bigger every yeah, year, and this is. year it felt like there's a lot going on here now. Oh I think God, yeah. I haven't been for a couple of years, and yeah. it was, I was amazed that it was so, so big. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's basically the whole of the vaults now. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. But I digress. We're talking well. about Edinburgh right now, although it is Fringe Festival support. So yeah, technically speaking, I would say that's a fair game. <laughs> um, the cobbles and hills of Edinburgh, yes. where do you go to find yourself a little bit of peace and quiet? Oh, um, I've, I've become a bit of a, 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 a gym person. Ooh. Now, and that's not because I'm like, I'm really fit or whatever, like it's just really nice to be somewhere, like mm -hmm. a different space. Mm. So I go to the gym quite a lot. Uh, so I've got a steam room and stuff, which is quite nice. Which gym do you go to? The Omni Centre, the Nuffield, right. down Bridge Street. And it's got uh, steam room? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Very useful on days like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just go in there. Um, and um, where else? I love Hula on the grass market. Have you been there, the juice bar? Yes, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, get some nutrients. She has no spoon. Do you know that oh yeah, spoon. spoon. Yeah. That's uh, that's a great little refuge, yeah. isn't it? Do you know that place? I don't know. Where about oh, Scott? It's it Nicholson Street. Nicholson Street. Street. Yeah. But you go up the stairs. People, a lot of people don't know about it. Which is, you generally get a table, but the food's good mm. and it's really bright and yeah, it's it's good. I'm gonna start frequenting there if there's less people. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. yeah, it's delicious. I try and go up Arthur's seat a little bit now and then yeah. just to try and commune a little bit. But then it's rammed with tourists as well. So. How many times have you been up? Twice. Yeah. It's not that far, really. Yeah. I've got to be honest, it's not that far. But it, it can be a bit of an endeavour if it's the the rainy weather. And you're in full drag. Yeah, and you're in full drag. <laughs> I mean, getting that dress up there <laughs> just gets traipsed through the mud. I'll, I'll do my daily public service announcement that uh, you can go up the other way to Arthur's seat and it's a lot less punishing. Oh, really? Than if you approach it from this side of town, it's very sheer and you end up kind of having to climb a lot but you can actually go around the north side and there's a much more gentle a gentle easy slope <laughs> but people do like to go up there we were saying the other day um, barry ferns who was on the show the other week has set up a trip advisor uh, page for arthur's seat where he advertises free wi-fi and <laughs> probably a steam room it's completely <laughs> fake listings for arthur's seat um, i'll stop using that anecdote soon but not until I stop finding it entertaining. <laughs> probably ain't going to happen very, uh, very soon. Um, so we're going to cut away to a package right now. We're going to talk now to Michelle Zayner, who came on the show the other day to talk about her show. Hi, Michelle. Hey. Tell us about your show. Okay, so my show is called A Modern Guide to Heroism and Sidekickery, um, which is a great idea when you write it down, but when you have to say it a lot, it becomes <laughs> a long name. Um, it's about a superhero who is a bit shit. Um, she has the ability to make pigeons go away. Um, you know, n most people can do that, but they have to clap. Yeah. So she can just make them leave. Um, 
and because of that she becomes known as a bit of like a superhero in her town and and people are like oh well can you help with the the mugging problem we've got and she kind of works out a way to do that and they're like oh you're a superhero now can you help with the uh, escaped llamas uh, can you help with the lightning strike can you help with the mental health crisis can you help heal this broken friendship and she starts being the person that has to solve everything and and the media start to report her as like this amazing superhero and she just can't keep up and she can't keep up with the kind of the stories that's been built around her that she is feeling less and less a part of um, and so I tell the story with because uh, it's just me on stage I tell the story with a mixture of uh, theater storytelling comedy poetry shadow puppetry a little bit of physical movement okay um, yeah so I can't I get distracted if I do one thing for too long yeah people get bored yeah yeah stop that yeah no, it's, it's, yeah it's the thing about a solo show you're like I can't possibly just talk for an hour everyone will hate me so <laughs> I, I do a bunch of different things um, so uh, how long have you been? You're, you're not a local I can no I can, I'm very good with accents I can tell that you're, <laughs> you're at least from England no no I'm not actually I'm from Australia okay yeah but um, I Originally, I've lived in London for two and a half years. Okay. So uh, I'm a mimic. Um, but yeah, so I'm in London most of the time, but I originally am from Brisbane in Australia, uh, which is far away from here. Yeah. So do you go back there after the show? Are you, you no. Come, you come here no. From... I'll go back to London okay. after the show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's um, a long way as well. Oh man, like the train journey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's just, you know, I, I had to sit next to someone last, it was a hot day, yeah. they stood up to get their bag, it was a bad time. Did you get delayed? No, There was actually. a lot of delays because yeah. of the heat wave, I think, yeah. I think they blamed the heat wave. They, yeah, I think... And then they, the next day they blamed the rain. Yeah, they just don't have good trains. No. Um, anything other than a light drizzle and everything's broken. Yeah. Um, it was a substantial line for the uh, lift when we got off the train though. Right. Like, we waited at least 20 minutes for it the is, lift. It is a lot like that at Fringe Time because there's always an interesting fun game of like people looking around and going, I can take some furniture up on the train. Like, I can take bits of my set. And yeah. then there's some people who have like chests of drawers and sofas. And so, yeah, the, the cues for the lifts are because everyone thought, they won't mind if I bring like one chair. But yeah. if everybody brings a chair, yeah. it gets very busy very quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long have you been here? You've got up. Uh, a few days? I've been in... For the context of the video, I should point out that it's currently Thursday, the second, and preview day. So the, the official opening of the festival is tomorrow. Yeah. I'm saying so, this because we don't know when this will go out. Oh, okay. So, to give All context right. of yeah. when you're arriving. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm like, wait, are we, are we pausing? Are we going to edit this bit out? Should this I? is happening in the future. <laughs> Ooh. Um, no, I have been in Edinburgh for three days since Monday. Has he been before? Thursday. Yeah, um, I have family in Edinburgh, so I've been kicking around for a while. Okay. Um, it's nice though, I love this city, and I love how much it changes when the festival happens. Yeah. Because like, I'm usually here at Christmas to see my aunt, and it's like sleepy, kind of slow Edinburgh, and then right now it just doesn't stop. We were saying yesterday there are hundreds of performers, like in London in particular, or like for anywhere, that think Edinburgh is like Brigadoon. It, it kind of only, <laughs> it only appears in August and then it just like disappears again. It's this mythical place that's only open for a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you if you don't leave on the 27th, you get stuck. You can never leave until the 1st of August comes back around. Yeah, but that's okay because actually outside of Edinburgh, rent around here, it's like £100 for like a full house oh, it's for a month. Okay, well, um, maybe I could commute to London. <laughs> um, Five hours, it's almost worth doing. Yeah, you know. Save that much. Um, so have you have you teched? Have you are you have you started? Yeah, no. Um, I have. I did my tech last night. I'm um because I'm performing by myself. I've teamed up with another solo performer, uh, Liz McMullen, who's doing a show called Stupid Cupid, um, and I'm stage managing her show when she's stage managing my show. Yeah. Um, because we're insane. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, One show a day is not enough. No, no. Let's do so many things. Um, but so she started two days ago. She's doing really well. 
um, and I just finished teching her show like half an hour ago. Um, and then my show is teched, everything works, which is really exciting because I have a like overhead projector, like the flip top ones from the 1980s. Oh yeah. Yeah, and every time I plug it in, I'm like, what's gonna, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's vintage. Yeah, you just can't buy the light bulbs for them anymore, so. Right. It's gonna last though, and it's gonna be fine. <laughs> this will be fun. You need to come back towards the end of the festival and tell us that, <laughs> that you've got through it. Because there'll be a lot of people, I don't want this to be on the internet forever and everyone wondering, what did happened? she did she get through? No, well, that's true. Did she uh, have to survive without visuals? Well, you know, I can, I, I, it did break on me once when I was in Adelaide and I, I just, I went, now, imagine, <laughs> imagine there's a if newspaper something article on this screen. Hard to do shadow puppetry with that. It's all, yeah, yeah. I did have my stage manager in Australia ran up and like got a torch nice. and like held up the puppet for me. That's the sort of beautiful thing that happens at fringe festivals, yeah, right? Yeah. They're the moments that you remember. Yeah, no, it was great. And when it all goes horribly wrong and community spirit saves the day. Yeah, because the, the audience wants it to work. Yeah. So most of the time the audience will go, this is clearly not what's supposed to happen. Let's just all get together and yeah, they go along with it. Um, how are you at looking after yourself? So you've not done the Edinburgh Fringe before, but you've done, you've done Brighton, you've done Adelaide. How are you with looking after yourself during a festival? Yeah. It's, it's an interesting beast because you stop having days off and you stop having time to yourself because everything's like people and talking and selling your show. Um, and I've had to kind of give myself a bit of a talk sometimes because yeah. um, the best thing I can do for my show is to do my show well. And if I spend five hours flying and I lose my voice and I'm exhausted and, and I find, because I have depression, I manage that as well, that if I spend so much time with people, I just lose all reserves to sort of look after myself. Mm. So I really have to go, you know what? I can't fly all day today. What I can do today is maybe fly for an hour, take some time to sit somewhere like a park, the meadows is amazing, mm -hmm. and, and then do my show well. Um, so it's like it's, it's really easy to fall into this if you don't do everything now everything will fall apart and no one will come to your show um, but actually if you do that you will fall apart are you sharing flowering duties with with my friend Liz yeah, yeah. and we've got a couple of friends of friends in to kind of help us fly because it's really hard to fly in the half hour before your show when you're getting ready for your show yeah um, I tend to nail the person. It's the, oh, you're in Edinburgh, aren't you? Can I come and stay a few days and I'll just sleep on the couch? It's like, yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. But you will be flying for me. Yeah. You know, at least like two hours a day if yes. you want to do that. That's the way to do it. It is. Yeah. Because you just have to coerce people into doing it. Yeah. Especially because it's so important to make that time for yourself. Mm. Because as you say, it's, it's your job. Like, yeah. It's, that's, that's why you're here. Yeah, for sure. There's some really great places to hide in Edinburgh, though. Like, the, have you been up to the top of the... Uh, is it the No, the museum. Oh. It's no. like, you can, there's like a rooftop garden on the museum. Okay. Um, is it Chambers Street? Maybe. I don't know. It's like, on Southbridge, turn left, there's the museum, and it's like maybe an art gallery as well. I'm not sure. But if you go right up to the very top level, there's a rooftop garden with like alpine scrubby things. Um, it's nice and it's quiet yeah and you can see like all of the city it's important to have that sanctuary yeah, yeah. although there will now be now thousands of people yeah there. shit I, um, don't worry everybody else has been sending people to Portobello Beach so oh well, yeah they're, no they're yeah. all there yeah go there that's way better there's <laughs> um, like uh, waves and ice cream uh, are you good at eating and drinking do you do you look after yourself <laughs> there I am I, I, I am definitely a, if I buy one, like I, I buy a cheap lunch and then I just kind of snack and I am guilty of not eating a proper meal mm. because I'm like, oh, but I've got to save money and I don't really need food. But um, I also get really hangry. Um, so I set up a couple of friends to just go, if I'm complaining, go, Michelle, have you eaten? Mm. Um, because it's very easy to just live on chips and donuts. Um, and angry flyers don't tend to enamor themselves. No. <laughs> See my show! Do it. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah, you know, whatever, I don't care. Um, 
What are you most looking forward to while you're here? Ooh. You know, I haven't really, like, I've been so much, I'm going to get my show, I'm going to do my show at the Fringe. Like, I've wanted to do a show at this festival for four years, you know, like, I don't know if I've stopped to think about what I'm most looking forward to. Um, oh, no, I didn't. Um, my show is, is very much like I put my brain on stage and um, at the end I, I uh, stand at the side and um, I have a box full of superhero masks and people could take a mask and be their own hero. Um, and that is the best because people come up and, and talk to you and uh, tell them, tell you how like your story, which was ridiculous and about superheroes and rabid llamas, connected with them. And that is the best thing. And I'm really looking forward to meeting my audience. Is mm. that an app? No, of, no, absolutely not. But yeah, like, you know, and also yeah, I'm looking forward to, like, seeing something I have no idea what it is at midnight in a tiny shoebox room and, you know, all of those fringe things. But yeah. No, I really want to see what the audience take from it. And, and where is your show? My show, I should say that at the... Uh, you should. Yeah. Don't worry, in, in the description below this video there will be... Oh. Uh, we will we'll make sure that we like put the ticket my chin. link. Absolutely. <laughs> Just hovering here for the whole... Yeah, excellent. Um, I am at Zoo Venues, Zoo Charteris, which is on the Pleasance. It's an old church. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I am there at 16.50 every day, but the 13th. It's the great pleasure of this festival that all of those wonderful like, old buildings they're just lovely to be in. Like yeah. You go into some venues, you think this is a beautiful place. I almost wish they hadn't put all their corporate branding up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just want to see what this room looks like without it. Yeah, though I, the venue my friend Liz is in, I like peeled back a bit of black cladding today while I was in the tech booth. It was just like whiteboard. Uh, I'm like, oh, we are in a classroom. <laughs> um, but no, my, yeah, big uh, wooden ceiling, like it just echoes and yeah, the, um, the tech box for my venue is like the choir vestry, oh, yeah, the yeah. choir stand, like the upstairs bit where the yes. choir would. Like, I think it is. Like in Basil Lerman's Romeo and Juliet, where they sing um, the Doves Cry. That's where, yeah, that well, was a good explanation. Absolutely. We got Baz Luhrmann in. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know like. This, get the Aussie angle in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just supporting local artists. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I hope it goes wonderfully for you. Me too. Come back later and tell us yeah. how it's been going. Yeah, love to. Thanks awesome. so much. Awesome. <laughs> You've got about 20 minutes to <laughs> record remember that. what it's called. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, that was Michelle talking about her show, which sounds fantastic. Uh, do go and see it. Uh, we're now going to talk a little bit about how we cope through this marathon month of a festival. Polly. Yes. What do you do to just, how do, you, how do you treat yourself well? I think you pace yourself, don't you? I mm. think you just, you know, you ration yourself and you also like don't restrict yourself from going and enjoying the variety of stuff. I think, you know, it's, it's an incredible opportunity. We've all spent a lot of time, money and effort to be here. Um, so you've got you've to enjoy it while you can. Um, yeah, and I think it's quite important not to let any kind of negative feeling about or well, they've got a bigger audience than me, or they, how have they got that reviewer in? You've just got to go, that's fantastic. And that's, you know, there's all that variety. Yeah, we've been talking about that a lot. Yeah. That, I think that, that is what people find hard, because you just slip into yeah. that sort of competitive... Yeah. Like, I want to win Edinburgh. Yes, I want to exactly. win it. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's no real win condition, is there? Like, or no. there's no win condition that someone can have that takes it away from, from you. Exactly. Um, Prom Queen, have you been reviewing? Have you been reviewing well? We've, I mean, this year we've had one great review. I think we haven't had that many, but I've noticed a couple of reviewers in that perhaps haven't published, but I'm not sure why. Um, last year we had some great reviews, so mm. maybe people are sort of putting us to the back of their list because they've already given us a review last year. Right. Right. But I also sort of think that sometimes perhaps reviewers come in and think this isn't necessarily targeted at me or that they're not if they're not part of the LGBT community mm. or if they're not really sure about the pop culture references because we've got an absolute ton of them mm. that maybe they re they reserve themselves a little bit because everyone's having a great time there yeah. I'm loving it as well so 
it's great. It's just a great show, but it's fun. And Eddie, there's, as a writer and director of a piece, a lot of pressure on on reviews. There's nowhere to hide, really. At least you're not in it yeah. as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> hide in the audience. Um, yeah, it is odd. That's the thing, because you do try and sort of, you, you know, you do want to distance yourself from it. But then, particularly if you're producing as well, how can you? And also, you've got to do the social media side of things yeah. a little bit. So how can you not be looking at you know all the other tweets as well? So it's it's really difficult, isn't it? You kind of yeah, because you are exposed to all of that. But then um, yeah, it's keeping perspective and sort of. I mean, our show it's yeah, we're kind of ranging from four stars to two, which we we kind of knew as well. This like the the, the, the piece and its nature is not for everyone and, yeah. we, and so we were like yeah we want to make a piece which divides but then of course you come up and you go what do you mean you don't fucking get it do you know what I mean it's just like how can you not and so it's yeah and so we were expecting that um, and yeah I guess and that's, it is what it is you know I think you've got to you've got to keep the faith haven't you you've got to, you've got to believe in your show totally. even if somebody if it wasn't for somebody mm -hmm. I mean l last year we had a show up here we got we got the full scale we got we got a one-star review and a five-star review yeah, on the same day. They saw the same, same performance. Show. Yep. Oh, wow. So the same performance, uh, and one person absolutely loathed it. Thought there was nothing to it, mm. and another thought it was great. That's um, brilliant. I mean, yeah. That's amazing. But I keep saying my, my favourite review from last year was a three-star review. Nothing like nothing spectacularly bad or good about it. But in it, they said this company clearly believes in what they're doing. Mm. Mm. It wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, and I think. I think it's really important to remember that all of these opinions that are out there, people put so much pressure on themselves yeah. Yeah. with these yeah. reviews. But also, you kind of get used to certain reviewers, like in London, whether it's, I don't know, yeah, Lynn Garden or whoever, you get used to their taste, whereas you come mm. up here and it's three weeks, but you don't really know who yeah. it is, or maybe you don't, you don't, you're not aware of you know, the yeah, previous reviews of that person. Yeah. So that makes it even more. They've more got like 30 better. people reviewing for them, and yeah. you don't know who you're going to get. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not like, oh, the Scotsmen always hate our shows, well, mm. like, we should probably shouldn't invite them or, you know, because it, it, it could be somebody completely different. Um, One of the great joys I have is that on the way out, I get to meet the audience as they're leaving, so I jump out to get some pictures and, you know, social media, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I just get to see their reaction and genuinely, like, there's so many kind of people from the LGBT community or non-binary people who are just absolutely loving it so I just get to take that I, mm. I feel bad that the rest of the cast don't get to do it as well because yeah. it really is heartwarming you're the only one that does it yeah I'm the only one that gets to do it because I'm in the drag I'm in the makeup and everything like that so it sort of it makes a better picture I suppose in some ways but yeah like hearing their opinions and hearing their genuine enthusiasm jeez you up yeah. jeez you up so much it's interesting that the uh, the Ed Fringe website has uh, they, they, they put audience reviews and uh, yeah. professional reviews and I noticed that this year they flipped it so the audience reviews appear first now and you actually have to click again to see the professional ones they're on a separate tab so by default the audience reviews are there yeah because you know that that's what matters most I mean yeah. it's nice you know it's nice if someone writes something really yeah. lovely in on paper because yeah. it's like it makes it true um, <laughs> You know, only, only the five star one. Obviously, the, of, yeah. the, of the two, the one yeah. star review and the five star review. Obviously, the five star review was the correct opinion. Um, but you know, that that kind of focus on audience, I think, is great. And yeah, Twitter and Facebook have been great for that because yeah. you know, it just makes your day when you get when you get a nice a nice word. Yeah. yeah. Um, your cast. So you're you're in. How many in the in the There's cast? five in the cast and our musical director as well. Are you all are you all staying together? Yeah, we're all in the same flat on South Clark Street. It's a bit of a riot. I was going to say. So, d does that work both ways? Is that is that a pleasure or is it? Yeah, is it, hard? It, it means that you've got a, you know a bunch of people to share the highs and lows, the celebrations and the commiserations of the festival with. But then also there's that little element of sometimes you want a little bit of sanctuary, like we were talking about a moment ago. You need a little bit of space sometimes. So it's it's that 50-50, and the, the clamour for the shower in the morning is insane. Yeah. One bathroom. Yeah, we've only got one. Ooh. Only got one, unfortunately. Who gets? How do, how do you work that then? Is it a race or? Uh, I usually get in there first because I'm first up, uh, and I just like to get the hot water quickly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the rest the of them, I think some of them go to the gym and shower yeah, there as well. Yeah, yeah. 
friend of mine came for a festival and was sleeping uh, outside the bathroom. Uh, that was how many they had in that flat. Wow. Uh, there were people in sleeping bags all the way along the landing. Oh, yeah, well, we've got all the partners who are arriving at the moment, so right. I think it's going to double the number of people in the flat. So we'll see how that goes. Do you have your own room? Yeah, we all have our own room. Yeah. So, yeah, lucky, very lucky. That's important, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice to be able to just shut the door and say, I'm just going, I'm just going away for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> How's your how's your living situation? My what are you, what are you is, doing? Oh, it's fabulous! Yeah, I mean, I'm my uh, my partner Tom is in the show with me, so he, we're sharing a room. I thought it'd be nice. Um, and I've got uh, Jordan Brooks is in the flat, and Matt Winning and James, which is great. So, so it's a really happy flat. And we were um, Matt and James and I and Tom were all together last year as well. So it's like this continuity there. It's like coming home in a way. And Jordan's fabulous as well. So. Yeah. Same right. flat, different flat? Same flat. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm hearing that quite a few times, yeah, actually. Yeah. Who's getting all of these relationships with uh, landlords? I don't think Matt Winning's paid someone off somewhere. Right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> then we had the Cagoules on the other day, and they were saying oh, yeah. that they've been, I think I think they said three or four <coughs> years, they've been back same place every time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, and the great. same people. Really? Yeah. yeah. Need to get on this. Yeah. <laughs> Need to find out where these deals are being made. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, back streets of Edinburgh. How do you deal with it? You've got family here, so presumably you're behaving yourself and you're eating and drinking well and yes. looking after yourself and staying hydrated. Staying hydrated, very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a bit of a different festival. Actually, Angel and uh, little boy Ted, they came up after, I think on the 8th when they came up. So I had that, that first week, which was... Got all your hedonism out, early doors. Well, I wish, no, it was going to say the show up, but, but it was weird. To, the fact that coming out to Edinburgh and setting a show up was kind of less tiring than being at home yeah. with an eight-month-old baby. It was just like Jesus. I'm getting you know getting longer lying up here um, and all that. Um, but then equally, it's really nice having them up. Um, yeah, early starts. But then I don't know, having your little boy bring a bit of sort of wholesome kind of something, you know, yeah. not fringe-related or so that, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice thing to have up here. Yeah, um, you're losing enough sleep, so you're looking after yourself a little bit better. Right? Trying to, yeah. Well, they didn't sleep through, so it's kind of like, you know, yeah, it's a bit noisy. Um, I took him flyering once um, around the courtyards. It was quite fun. Um, Is that a good prop? Do you, are people more likely to take flyers off? Yeah, you? but then I felt, yeah, they were, they were really interested, and I was, then I was trying to sell, I was trying to be funny, saying, oh, I've got a baby juggling show or whatever, or like unicycling baby or whatever. Um, Actually, no, it's this show. Um, uh, but then, I don't know, when there's all the beer and fags and stuff like that, and then you think, oh, God, actually, is this, is this right? And so then, yeah, <laughs> um, It's a shame. I, I, would, I would see a unicycling baby show. Yeah. Just, just uh, as a Next note, year. general note, yeah. if anyone wants to bring one, <laughs> I'll, I'll come see that. Train Why not? I will, I see, yeah. yeah. We sell more tickets than us. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit in the first half about Sanctuaries and, and Arthur's Seat. Uh, Important to talk, about, I think, about the sanctuary of your own space. Like, what do you do to like just get away from thinking about your show? Is there some Netflix involved? Is there? Yeah. I'm not fishing for a sponsorship deal. I'm not <laughs> necessarily, you know. But uh, I think a lot of people have said that that's sort of something they do. They just like go to the cinema and yeah. watch films and just escape. Absolutely. Weirdly, the other day we watched Stuart Lee's latest stand-up special. Like we're at, we're at the Edinburgh Fringe watching Stuart Lee on telly, but <laughs> it's like loads of stand-up just outside <laughs> yeah, the door. Just, but just go and see that. <laughs> uh, but it was great. It's kind of yeah. I think telly really helps, doesn't it? Yeah, telly. Um, long walks for me. I just like getting out of the house and get, getting some sunshine. Long walks to Sainsbury's down at Cameron Toll. <laughs> Good for them. Sounds great. <laughs> Long walks the same. Lonely. <laughs> but you stick on a podcast or listen yeah. to some music. You kind of, I make like a little playlist of that's my sort of fringe playlist, and you've got some kind of what you know what an app would call power songs or whatever that you just sort of listen to that kind of get you back into that spirit, into that mode of like, yeah, I'm back in myself. I'm centered. I'm fine. I'm good. That's good. Do you have a routine? Do you do you do you have the same routine every day, or more or less? Sort of, you, I think you develop one very quickly about you know what time you get up, what you do and go out, when you go out and flyer, coming back and eating, trying to make sure you get ready for the show on time and stuff like that. Yeah, so you've got to get a little bit of routine helps because your show's quite late in the evening, isn't it? Yeah, we're on it. Yeah, we're quite late, 9 05. So, I think we've got a good spell actually because you're, you're afternoon, 7 yeah, 35. Yeah. 
So if anybody wants to, they could they could well, do the full, well, yeah. the full triple. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, I think it's important to have a routine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it? Everybody deals with it different ways, but I'm, I'm quite like, routine about it because there's so much pressure on other things. So if I, at least if I can focus on the routine and keep that the same, then I don't risk anything going horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like getting up, same time, same routine. I find that very helpful. But different strokes for different folks. Um, do you think it gets easier the more time you're here? Oh. That's a brilliant Ooh. selection of faces, all thinking, <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I think we've, it's been easier to uh, sort of, you know, keep it sort of restrained, sort of, you know, going out and stuff, definitely, because the hangovers and tiredness and everything was having the baby, but yeah, the older, I don't know, the older I get, I'm just, yeah, it's, it's not easy to manage. So it's kind of like, yeah, you've, you've got to. Um, so that's kind of got easier, um, and actually, in the end, hopefully, just yeah, a bit more sort of wider perspective on things. And if a bad review comes in, it's it is, yeah, I think that, that I think you know, it's not easy, but I think that definitely gets a little bit easier as well. Um, the more work you create, you know, not everything's going to land with everyone, you know, so that you're going to get that thing. So yeah. I think you find that if you talk to, to fellow performers and like, just people working here, it does make it easier because everybody is going through the same, yeah. the same process, hopefully getting through the same process. Yeah. Um, if, if you could go back um, and say to young Holly, coming up here for the first time, a piece of advice, what do you think it would be? Uh, there's one very specific incident with a, with a, with a, with a bloke that, <laughs> that immediately springs to mind. But um, yeah, I think just uh, care, but care less as well. Like care and do the best job you can do, but just focus on that. Uh, yeah, and don't have sex with appropriate men when you're, <laughs> just behave when you're a student. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. So you were, you were university when you came yeah, up here, so yeah, yeah. Kind of, you've, you've developed as a person since then quite yes, a lot. Yes, I hope I so. <laughs> um, what, uh, can you think of a moment that you've been here, I don't like to bring up these things, but like a, a kind of low moment? How do, how do you lift yourself from that and come back? Last year there was one, one time I was walking in for the show. I do all my makeup at home because mm -hmm. you know what fringe um, dressing rooms are like. They're quite yeah. small, there's not really a lot of space and stuff like that. So I did the makeup at home. Uh, I was walking to Underbelly on Cowgate and just when I got to Greyfriars Bobby, this guy went puff really quite loudly. And I sort of stopped uh, and just caught myself going, what did you say? Mm -hmm. And he said, I said puff. And it was, it took me completely by shock. did actually double down on that. Yeah, because I kind okay. of thought, Wow, this is 2017. Like, I mean, I thought that homophobic slurs had developed somewhat, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. But that said, there was a policeman about 10 meters away who came over and just diffused the situation. So that kind of helped me. And I spoke to the to the cast about it, and they were entirely supportive. And everyone that I spoke to was entirely supportive about it. So it wasn't it wasn't the the worst moment. I mean, it was a horrific kind of mm. shock, but. It made me realise, you know, he's he's in the minority entirely, uh, and I had a huge support network of people, and I think that's quite important as well. I mean, like, I always wonder what it's like to do a solo show up here because you maybe do you have the same kind of team to fall back on if you're going through a bad period or anything? Yeah, I mean, th this year more so because we're um, we're produced by Fighting the Dog, who are fantastic, and and you know, there's that support network. But um, yeah, last year I was flyering, and my the, the flyer was my face. I remember going up to a guy in the gardens and giving him the flyer and it, him uh, looking at him and going, oh, God, I don't want that piece of shit, and scrumping up and throwing it at me. I was like, well, that, that, that is my face. Like, you've just called me a piece of shit. <laughs> um, and he doubled down on it again. Yeah. And you just go, OK, fine. You've got some very fragile uh, masculinity there that you need yeah. to protect, and that's, that's up to you. But, yeah. It's not, there is a community spirit Absolutely. here. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I think... In both of those circumstances, everybody would be like, I can't believe that's happened, yeah, and, and I exactly. want to hug somebody immediately. 100%. I, I ran into uh, Jess Butcher, who's doing a beautiful play, Sparks, in the presence, and, and I told her what happened, and she just, we just cried and ate food and cried. It was great, yeah. you know. That's, you, you, all your mates are here, aren't they? So it's, yeah. you know, it's great. All your mates are yeah. Mm. 
And Eddie, you, you, family being here, that must be quite good yeah. in terms of the support, because it's important to reach out to all sorts of different strands of, mm. of support networks. For sure, I mean, in terms of, yeah, what do you do to sort of bring you out of it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, as soon as yeah, you've got your baby or whatever, you have to, you know, part of Guinness as well, that, that's just very nice. <laughs> Guinness and baby. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well that's going to take into um, it sounds great, I think it's called B uh, Bambino, a show called Bambino, which is, um, it's a Scottish opera yes. thing. Yes, it's for very young, very young for, children. Yeah, for zero to 18 months, and um, yeah, I think you just let them loose in this like, in a, like, padded area and there's all the like, yeah, music, and I'm, in fact it's probably the show that I'm most excited about going to. Um, yeah, so that's next week. That's nice. Well, I mean, it's funny you mention that because there is actually a, a show for kids that's about to kick out, which is usually our warning that that's about time <laughs> yeah, right. that we should probably wrap up. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been, been a, a lovely pleasure. Thank you so much, Mark. It's been lovely. Thank you. Uh, so all the details of people's shows will be in the description at the bottom of the screen. Go out there, keep dry, stay hydrated. Contradictory, but do it and have fun. And remember, this is supposed to be fun and professional. <laughs>